And so, our story continues. After the victory over Tiamat's rise to power, the sojourners debriefed in their respective homes. But soon enough, they realized that their mutual home, the Plain of Bonsarel, stood in the shadow of the Blood War. They reunited to become informed and primarily to act. The sojourners were then informed that the Blood War could spill over into their own plane if they didn't take steps to hold back the spread within Avernus. For reasons of their own, they banded together to venture into Avernus, not to win, but to restore the balance of the war. For if they failed, then the conflict between the demons and the devils would eventually swell into an uncontestable force. As it were, Zariel, the leader of the devils, stood now with Matalok's hammer and Morden's battle axe two weapons of leadership to unite the Hells under her victory. But the demon lord Yinigu crept silently from the shadows of the abyss and readied his horde with an evil grin. With the sojourners arriving in Avernus and now traveling across the plains of fire in search of Fort Knucklebone, they found themselves in desperate need of food and water and healing from the unforgiving heat of Avernus. Guided by their newfound imp, Professor Thaddeus Banks, they traverse on. And so our story continues. You lumber onward through the plains, and between steps you encounter a few craters and pits, now drained from their black sticky demon ichor. Various tire tracks trail through the dirt over sharp ridges of rock that lined the land like a spiny backbone. Suddenly, your blood begins to drain from your face, and we see your footprints left behind in a sidewinding fashion. Would each of you please roll a constitution saving throw? Felthrin with a 20, Bramble with a 13. Yikes. Garandan with an 18. Gee. Hay has passed out <laughs> along the desert floor. <laughs> is, uh, oh, Hay is actually in flight with a kite. He's uh, attached to a kite string currently, still levitating, I assume. Who would be, uh, who would be trailing Hay with the kite string? All right, Felthrin. Yeah. Hey, if you would roll a constitution saving throw. 15. Yeah, Bramble, low number loser. All right, the rest of you are slumbering on. I would like to know what each of you is paying attention to in this unforgiving wasteland, keeping in mind that Felthrin, you are holding the rope attached to Hay as he's levitating and kind of trying to get an aerial view looking out. Garandan, you're slumping along your boots, chafing against your skin. Bramble, you are falling far behind and suffering another point of exhaustion, I might add. You now have disadvantage on all ability checks, saving throws, attack rolls. Garandan, how do we see you and what are you paying attention to? Um, so Garandan's um, with uh, Professor Thaddeus Banks as he's leading the way, he's up front, they're conversing and just kind of, uh, you know, he's, he's like, he likes him. Um, you know, he's just, cause he saw that human element come out of him last time. And he's just kind of like wanting to build him up a little bit. But yes, as I was saying, it's very uncommon to have such mortal beings in this part of the furnace. And if um, <laughs> you, what I do tend to enjoy is Watching the mortals come up with such clever inventions. And he points towards hay, stringing along, levitating. It, might I pick your brain? Um, I couldn't help but notice that uh, uh, two of you appeared to be of short stature, dwarves, I imagine, and the other one being um, what uh, humankind. The fellow back there must be like a beardless dwarf, for I have not encountered his kind. What indeed brought you all together here? I understand you are on a mission to go to a party. 
and uh, perhaps um, get invited, in which I hope I can help. Besides needing supplies and food and <laughs> obvious healing. What else brought you together here? And he seems to be prying you for information at this point. Oh, you know, um, when we came here, we were trying to get invited to uh, Belle's party. We've heard it's a hoot. And, uh, you know, yeah, we, some of us didn't want to come, not gonna lie to you, but we're here now and uh, glad to have a guide. Hey, as you're trailing off, keeping a close tab on Felthrin, to what are you paying attention to and how do we find you? It's very hot up here. And as the warm, overly warm breezes blow across his face, he finds himself wishing for just a moment with the lady in her realm of ice. And he scans the horizon from 20 feet up. Obviously, he's not going to see terribly far, much further than everyone else, but he's on the lookout for anything that looks suspicious, anything that looks dangerous, and just trying to make sure that uh, that the party is aware in advance of anything coming their way. Plus, he's also looking for any signs of civilization or you know, just things of interest. Make a perception check. Twelve. The haze of the nine setting suns is sickening to your eyesight. It's that perpetual twilight mixed with reds and yellows and even a foggy gray is uh, disorienting, nauseating even at times as you peer through. Um, you've been to the Feywild before, so you're very familiar with the twilight, but unlike the pleasant aroma of colors that splash your face and your sight, this here, you look around and you have a hard time telling what's up and down, and you can swear you see the horizon moving, and you can begin to feel the thunder and the clouds rumble, darkening your vision. You know that in a moment now, a meteor storm might actually arrive. I'm going to call that down. It's it's feeling a little weird up here. Um, I don't know. We, we might want to find some cover or something. Something to get us out. I, I think something bad's coming, weather-wise. And as you look around at this time, hey, the only thing you see within any realm of cover is a sparse copse of petrified trees that are withstanding the heat of Avernus. Felthrin, as you have one hand on your rope, paying attention to everything Hay is diver uh, divulging to you, what are you paying attention to and how do we find you in this unforgiving wasteland? Well, Felthrin's uh, definitely keeping a close eye on Hay, kind of you know, checking his grip on the the rope quite often. You know, I, I, he, I think he understands that Hay is doing this by his own power, but he still wants to make sure that since Hay handed him a rope, that he's not gonna let him float away like a balloon. Um, he's uh, he's look constantly looking at the other party members, uh, trying to trying to find some. He's plenty courageous, but trying to find some encouragement by how they're handling the environment because he's cooking inside his plate armor and uh and uh, is just um i think maybe pretty preoccupied with uh with how he's feeling um physically but also emotionally because uh, he's never subjected himself to this kind of constant evil or darkness for this extended period of time and uh you know kind of the idea that his uh his innocence when it comes to places like this is being challenged and so i think he's i think he's lost in some thought about um, some of the conversations that we've had about um maybe having to make deals with evil because it's less evil than the other evil and uh and really warring inside of his him himself what would that look like for him I'm going to have you make a wisdom saving throw at this point. 21. It's sufficient. For the time being, uh, despite the appearance of this place, despite the conflict within, uh, you are managing to hold your own 
and hold your head above water, as it were, is barely enough at this point. And you could still privately feel in the back of your mind that haunting voice. I am number one, and there is only me. There is only mine. There is only I. And you're able to stave it off for this moment. And then you hear nothing behind you, and you turn to look around to check on Bramble, and he has drifted 100 feet away from you. And you currently see him, arms outstretched in a haze and fixed motion, moving towards something completely unseen. Bramble, you find yourself staring at a mirage, a hallucination. The heat has overtaken you. Is it magic? Is it just loss of water? And is it just the dizziness that's taken over? You're stumbling forward, trailing behind each of all your belongings, dropping them one by one. You have uh, left behind three common items. And in this moment, I would like to tap into Bramble's uh, mind, for this is obviously a personal hallucination that has taken place. It's a mirage that you are drawn towards in this awful wasteland. Tell us about it. Bramble's world has been very small for a little while, um, not really able to perceive anything around him. He's just being like feeling so oppressed by the environment around him, um, you know, doing all he could for quite a while just to put one step in front of the other. And every once in a while, he would remember to look up and see which direction he's supposed to be going. One of the times he looks up um, and he thinks he sees um, he thinks he sees some nice trees some good healthy trees like a forest not a huge forest and he doesn't even think to look over to see if that's where everyone else has already gone he's just you know, so much in his own world closed off from everything around him. He just starts, you know, that's already, already the direction he was going. He just keeps going and thinks, oh, great, I have something to look forward to when I get there, if I ever do get there. And hey, you can now see that Bramble is drifted away from the rest of the party. And in fact, he is heading towards that copse of petrified trees. Uh, you can only tell. Um, but at this point, with your perception check, you can just see there's nothing else around it at this time. It just appears that Bramble has lost his mental capacities and is heading toward this, and he's trailing behind uh, your tools. Any tools that you have on you are now off your person. Half of your gold is now scattered on the desert floor, and any and major articles of clothing that would be uh, impeding your movement, any kind of cloaks. Bramble's in a tight spot. I give each, uh, I, with the exception of Garandan, who's kind of lost in conversation with Professor Thaddeus Banks, Felthrin, and hey, you are allowed to respond to this, but you are 100 feet away. I yank on the rope really hard, uh, like three times, and I yell down, Bramble is drifting. Felthrin will, um, I don't know how far he is behind Garandan, but he's going to 10 feet, he's going to, walk up to Garandan and very um, forcefully shove the rope in his face. Say, take this. And he's going to turn around and run back for Bramble. Uh, Elfrin, make the dash action double your movement. Mm -hmm. So I'll get halfway there. All right. Bramble, you failed your con save. So at this moment, you feel a small little fae-like creature quietly reach into your pocket and take one of your precious magical items. Think it would be something small, something lightweight, something easy enough for them to pilfer. Felix yes. gave me a ring of protection. Okay, yes, that would be just nice. fine. It's now gone. <laughs> ring of protection disappears and uh, Felthorn, you can now see this is obviously an ambush. You see these little like madcaps, these small fey creatures, they're wiry and skinny, a lot like uh, just puny little gnomes, but they don't have faces. They just have black masks pulled over their their eyes, 
big, large, gaping maws with sharp teeth, and instead of running, they're just bouncing and hopping like little jumping beans, bouncing back and forth. They converge upon Bramble, they gather his tools, they gather half of his gold, and then one of them grabs a ring and says, I hit the jackpot! And they uh, they start to scatter a little bit and then wait as Bramble moves closer and closer to the petrified tree. Bramble! Bramble! Uh, it's gonna take more than that to I, I think it is, but I will let you do a constitution saving throw with exhaustion. Well, I rolled a one and a four, so... Yeah, all right. Bramble, it happens. Felthrin, you see Bramble's body just disappear into this copse and this large pit that just opens up with his teeth begin pulling forward and this large tentacle begins to wrap around Bramble. Bramble, you are now fully awake and realizing that you are being led into this carnivorous hole in the ground. The madcaps begin laughing and jeering and chanting. So, uh, everyone roll initiative. 26. 13. 30, 20. Okay, so Felthrin, you can use your action to get into melee combat. Uh, I think Felthran's going to uh, double move to get to Bramble. And if he can, ex- if he can reach him, um, I don't know if he can do this with the double move, but he's going to just try to at least get a hold of him. If he can't reach him, then he'll extend his hammer head down to him. Would you like to do a high risk, high reward? Uh, yeah, if Bramble's getting eaten by a ground monster, then yes. Putting yourself in harm's way, you watch as Felthrin just charges, uh, I mean, pushes and everything. You can feel your heart just pounding in your chest. As you get closer towards this pit, you reach out your hammer, hoping that somehow Bramble will grab a hold of this hammer. So I'll let you do an athletics check. 24. So you dive and you're just throwing yourself right into the mouth of this pit. And what you end up doing is colliding and you and Bramble are now kind of locked in, you know, like skydivers. Uh, Bramble, it is now your turn. Uh, This creature is obviously intending to wrap and restrain you and pull you all the way down. Since you failed your check, currently you are grappled and restrained pretty much at disadvantage on everything. Your movement is zero. But what would you like to do now that you've been woken up? <laughs> um, I guess just try to get out of its, you know, break its grapple. Try to wiggle out. Acrobatics check with disadvantage. 15. All right. It's slippery and slimy and you can feel that it secretes this thick, this uh, viscous saliva and it makes it, you know, the tongue, the, the tentacle very slippery, and you try to get up, you just slide even further down. And you can now see that the pit is opening up and these teeth and eyeballs and mouths are beginning to call out to you. You can recognize this is the source of the hallucination. Garandan, 100 feet away, you see all this happening. You have hay on one hand. Professor, Professor Thaddeus kind of looks at you and says, oh, well, that's a shame. I kind of liked the old chap. But at least he won't need a doctor. He's gonna shout at him, that's my henfolk, and then run with hay on a kite and run towards him. Um, so can you set the scene so it's like a tree that's eating them? So you see a small copse of circle trees. Okay. Trees that have uh, been petrified and look like haunted ghosts in the wilderness. In the center of that copse, the ground has depressed into this crater marked with teeth and eyes and mouths. And in the center of this crater is this large tentacle that is pulling Bramble deeper into a pit. So he's going to move his 25 feet closer and then he's gonna guiding bolt that tentacle. Yeah. That's a 120 foot range. And you're going, all right, 120 foot range, nice. Uh, okay, you're going for 15. It's a 12. Guiding bolt just blasts through. You feel the radiant heat just shriek like a sonic wave just blast on by and you hear it whistle past your ears, Felthrin. And now we move to Hay. Hey, you are being currently drug along (laughs) by Garandan. Uh, You have achieved 
75 feet within melee distance. How do you proceed? Uh, I'm going to look down. I'm going to wave my hands and utter some words that, as I say them, leave an ashy taste in my mouth. And I'm going to cast Blight on the creature in the ground. So you need to roll a constitution saving throw against a DC of 17. Yeah. That's a 27. <laughs> okay. It is going to take half damage then. So right. that's 17 points. It writhes around a little bit and you begin to see these necrotic pock marks begin appearing on the tongue. Um, hey, from your distance, you can start to notice that there is a small little motorcycle uh, three of these madcaps are hopping onto it, and they have a little satchel full of Bramble's belongings, article of clothing, all his tools, and his gold. Half of his gold, as well as the ring of protection. They seem very pleased with this, and they're getting ready to leave. At the top of the round, uh, Bramble, uh, make a strength saving throw with this advantage. Uh, three... I have minus one. Felthrin, Bramble disappears from your sight. You see he just swoop, disappear into the ground. Bramble, what does Felthrin see? The last thing he sees is Bramble's heel. Just vanish out of sight. Uh, I assume there's a bit of a yelp that comes out of him, but that gets muffled pretty quickly as he goes underground. All right. Uh, 40 points of piercing damage you take and you begin to feel these these this fleshy mouth begin to squish upon you and just chew you in various spots it is awful it is dark it is wet and cold and you begin to feel this compression of this digestion process being taken place as you are shunted down this tube deep within the bowels of Avernus is this considered a plant or magical plant creature Yes, it's an it's a magical plant. It's okay. an organic plant. Mm -hmm. Then it, sh it should have made the save with disadvantage. Okay, let's get yeah. okay, plus seven. So that would be a twelve. Okay, so that would fail, and that means it takes max damage instead. <laughs> okay, how much is that? <laughs> uh, Sixty-four plus eight, uh, seventy-two points of damage instead of the seventeen. Whoa. A little okay. Different. Yeah. <laughs> with, with one hit point remaining, it drops Bramble. And Bramble, you begin to feel as, oh, this is awful, as this, this fleshy tube begins to suck you down in the bowels of the earth. You begin to feel it falling apart and being rended two from two. Uh, Felthrin, it is now your turn. Um, does it, it doesn't look like it's bottomless, right? It looks like it's like the inside of a is the most grossest thing. It's the grossest thing you can imagine. But if you just imagine a concentric circle with a smaller concentric circle in the middle, uh, very much like a um, donut hole sphincter, and it's just pulling him underneath the ground. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and you know the large tentacle has already been retracted. I would think that Felthran is going to use his action to tie his rope off on one of those trees. Okay. And he's going to dive in a la um, Princess Bride. Yes. I like that. Uh, you use your action, you quickly tie it off, easy enough for you to do, and then you just dive right in. Let's make a athletics check to see how well you can grab a hold of Bramble's heel. 15? You feel something and you pull. You realize it's an article of his clothing. It's a loose grip. Nevertheless, you do have some part of him. Uh, Bramble, it is now your turn. Uh, how, how would you contribute to the situation given your dire circumstance? You said that, did you say Bramble was able to feel it start, start to disintegrate a little bit? Yeah, okay. you're, you can feel the fleshy tube and you push past and almost feel the earth beyond that. Okay, I think he'll pull a dagger off of his belt and just try to cut himself a little hole or something. He might not even recognize the hand as Felthrin, so he might take a swipe in that direction. 
Act with disadvantage, please. Uh, 16. Uh, yes, that's enough. And as you stab into this, you begin to feel it spasm with one hit point remaining. And then all of a sudden you feel yourself shunted back the other direction, like a reverse vacuum. And you bump up against this wiry old dwarf and plate mail. And the two of you go spewing out of the ground, covered in this sticky red bile. And you slam upon the desert floor right as Garen Dan and Hay and Professor Thaddeus are arriving to the scene. The ground begins to move back into this uh, position, although Hay's magic of necrotic blight begins to affect the area and linger on with this horrible necromancy. Please, the four of you, how do you proceed with this? Bramble, Bramble, are you okay, Bramble? Oh, I, I don't know what happened to me. Um, I think so. I mean, that hurt a bit, but I... Wait, where's, where are my things? And then you hear it, the cackling fey-ish laughter of fairies, and they are starting up their engine into a tune of black puffed smoke and burning the tires, sending dirt in your direction, getting ready to exit. Gary and Dan's gonna cast banishment on two of the creatures uh, to hold them in place for a minute. Okay. Uh, save? Charisma saving throw on two of them. I want to get the one that's got his stuff, mostly. That's a natural one. That's a natural 20. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so I'll say the one, um, uh, story-wise, uh, who, making this decision in split-second time, Gary and Dan, would you go for the gold? Would you go for the ring of protection? Would you go for his clothing? Well, knowing that it's going to be expensive down here, I think he's going to go for the gold. Uh, the one with the gold is the one that also has the clothing. And all of a sudden, he just poof, disappears out of existence, and the clothing and the gold just crash down, trailing on the, the floor of the desert, and the uh, motorcycle begins driving away. Uh, thank you, Garen Dan. We gotta go get it. And if we can get you on that motorcycle, that'd be great, too. Yeah. Is there is there something I can do? Absolutely. Is that your intention? Yeah, I'm gonna fire Eldritch Blast at the front wheel of the motorcycle. Go for it, make your attack. You're going for a 12. I rolled a 17. Yeah, boom, you file this this Eldritch energy from the Feywild to just blast through, popping the tire and it spins out and they go tumbling forward, crashing on the ground. Um, they pretty much instant, instantly begin to splatter across the desert floor. Um, one of them legs completely come off one of them's neck snapped and he's just completely pinned underneath the wheel the motorcycle uh three-wheeled uh, motorcycle is now on top of its back and the tire is spinning in the desert take me over there take me over there got you let's go that's really funny. Like a child with a balloon. Gary I feel Dan so helpless. <laughs> yeah, rushing towards Hay. Hay just kind of lingering back, back, uh, providing aerial fire. Upon yeah, finding... I'm, yeah, go I'm ahead. kicking my feet in the air like I'm trying to run. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a moment to kind of recuperate and recover from this situation. Felthrin, uh, how do we find you? Uh, Felthrin is wiping, wiping the uh, sphincter explosion stuff off of him. And... Um, and uh, yeah, just trying to clean up a little bit. Uh, he's going to take inventory of um, what else is around there, if, if there's any more threat around. It looks like Garen Dan and Hay have the uh, motorcycle thing handled. So he's gonna check on uh, Bramble and, um, and then uh, maybe help Bramble clean himself off as well. I think um, because he can and he doesn't very often, I think he will um, he will cast Cure Wounds on Bramble as he sees his pain. Something you've been noticing, you've watched Garen Dan's magic, Hay's magic. You've noticed that on the plane of Bonsaral, your magic is very characteristic to who you are. But while on the plane of Avernus, you notice that the magic that you cast, that everyone casts, is slowly taking on an infernal quality, changing the appearance, the design, not necessarily the effect, 
but just the flavor of magic is taking on a more infernal picture. So as you cast this Cure Wounds, please describe what happens. So usually when Felthran casts his Cure Wounds, it's the vines that come up from the ground and and embrace the person. And there's there's a little bit of uh, of um, a kind of a bright light that that um, glows through the plant as it's healing them. Um, as he as he casts it on Bramble this time, the um, he he realizes there's no plants to come up, and um, and so he touches him and initially doesn't think anything's going to happen, but uh, as as he's praying and uh, and casting this spell, the petrified forest. Um, one of the branches um, reaches over, um, and but instead of wrapping him in a in a gentle, glowy um, embrace, it actually wraps itself around his neck. And for a second, I think I'm going to have to save him from this from this thing. And as I as I reach up to grab the branch, it releases and goes back to its petrified form. Felthran uh, looks at Bramble and says, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, I, I, are you okay? I, I think it still worked, but it was not. That, that was weird. I hate this place. I, I really do too. Oh, I don't know that I'll do that again, but I'm glad it helped. Bramble, your skin is beginning to scab over. Your face has been charred and singed from the sandstorm. Uh, your the bile acid is burning. <laughs> Four hit points. Yeah, minimum. <laughs> Very fitting. Uh, now you have like a little bitty, like almost rope burn from the petrified forest, kind of wrestling you with cure wounds. Hey, as you're surveying this area, are you still up in the air? Yes, I'm hopefully being led along by Garandan, who's chugging toward the motorcycle. Yeah, but I'm, I'm up in the air 20 feet. Garandan, you know that there's a little bit of a timer as this madcap is about to just appear. But hey, right before all this is happening, you're reminiscing on the lady and you're thinking about your last conversation with her and the name Cecilio comes back to your memory. You remember that she was insistent that you make them pay for the torture they did to her wonderful Eladrin consort, Cecilio. He served in the Celestial Army with Zeriel long before she fell from grace. The last thing the lady had heard is Cecilio was kind of tossed around like a circus toy for the amusement of various arc devils. No one knows what's happened to him since. You can only assume he is dead rotting in some prison here. I'm going to make this guy pay. And so as I'm being bounced along, I just fire Eldritch Blast. That's four beams all headed for that same figure. The madcap? Yep. <laughs> okay. So Garen Dan, you're just watching that same spot and all of a sudden the madcap appears and he's got like the, uh, the gold, oh, sorry, the ring of protection in his hand. And he looks at you with buggy eyes and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. and his arm just flies back and the ring of protection goes dusting across the landscape and he lies with four bolts in his chest. Are there any other creatures around? Save Professor Thaddeus Spanks and he's right there and says, well, you certainly do know how to handle yourself in times of conflict. That was quite a trap, I say, are you a... <laughs> My eyes are just black. He leans over to you, Garen, and says, Well, I don't know about that one. I don't feel like he's all right and everything. But your friend, Henfolk, the one you care about so much, I say if he didn't need a physician before, he needs a physician now. Bring me down. Okay. And I don't think that ring of protection is living up to its name. I got you, hey. Come on down. <laughs> 
Once I get down, I'm going to march over to the motorcycle and use mending to fix the front tire. Or try to, anyway. Is the intention for the Sojourners to take the time to repair this vehicle? That's right. Okay. Uh, hey, you begin to use this. Um, go ahead and make an Arcana check um, with some level of difficulty by yourself. But there should be one or two of you who are just going to offer. Yeah, so Garrington, yeah, how would you? said, I've got mending too, so I'll help him out. And okay. Felthren will offer his strength to uh, pick things up, to put things back in place, to move things around. So you begin to, Felthren, you use your body strength, lift this thing back on its right side and between your magics, our, uh, your arcana and your knowledge of magic. <laughs> this is a very unique machine as it's powered by a fire engine. You can see that the madcaps have been pouring the dark demonic ichor into the engine, causing it to combust and release this powdery black smoke that propels the engine back and forth. You can also see that there is a small coin resting on the uh, dashboard. It's about the size of a dinner plate. It looks very expensive and is carved with infernal runes. Who takes interest to in this? I'll point it out to Garandan. What? What is that? Now, now that my eyes are cleared. Oh, good. I'm glad you're back. Oh, that other guy was scary. Uh, uh, it looks like a coin of some kind, and I can read these runes around it. Uh, Garandan, you know what this is. This is a soul coin. Very rarely will a soul instead of going straight to the front lines of battle, will be cashed in with a currency. This is one mortal soul, uh, often used to trade for favors. You can read the name on it, if you want. You will. And you recognize it as Dagult Never Ember. Uh, he's just gonna drop to his knees like he knows that name. And uh, he, he's not going to be any good for a minute. Bramble and Felthren, you see this take place. What, what did you find? Going down. You remember Lord Never Ember and his wife? Yeah. This coin is his soul. That is what? We left him in waters deep, and somehow he's he's ended up here. He's his soul has been cashed in for this coin. I don't understand how that works, Professor. Can you fill him in? Yes, I'm sorry. The uh, younger dwarf appears to be a bit distraught. Um, it's very simple. Upon making some kind of deal, um, mortal souls sometimes even volunteer as the Blood War is a war of battle of high honor. It's a place many people covet to spend their eternity, and uh, Zariel is very convincing. However, every once in a while a soul is not fit for battle, and is oftentimes just cashed in at a metal currency, and traded back and forth, and eventually, you know, can be cashed in for its monetary value, which is, of course, a mortal soul. is quite literally trapped inside this soul is the friend and daggled never ember, I think he was. Um, every single devil here has been through this process, but not everyone remains in the coin. Most often we get shipped to the front lines. I hate this place. With the soul coin of daggled never ember in your hands, you can feel it heavy and weighted. Um, but all of a sudden, the engine starts. Bramble, before you all head out, did you want to accomplish anything? Just uh, sort of pick up my stuff and take a moment to thank everybody. I, I really don't know what I would do without you guys. Uh, thanks for coming back for me. I we wouldn't leave you behind. I know. It's it's good to hear that, and it's good to see it, too. We should go. 
Anyone know how to drive this thing? How many does it fit on? This looks like a vehicle. Uh, it houses three comfortably. In the little sidecar. <laughs> well, you do have a certain warlock that is willing to be trailed behind like a parasail. <laughs> And now we need to be uh, collecting Iker, apparently. Mm-hmm. Indeed. You do have a full tank, you can notice. This is the same crew that slurped up the remaining of rocks that you countered in the sandstorm. Um, so Karen going to put Bramble in the back. We'll suggest him in the back and cover him with his cloak. Give him some shade um, to kind of be cool. Um, and then he's going to look at Feltran and be like, I'll drive! Okay, and then you'll pat him on the back and cast Guidance to give him an extra uh, D4. Um, I can totally see you with a with one of those German-style helmets. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> <sense now. laughs> like... Felthen, uh, Felthen's got the mohawk now. <laughs> the face paint. Uh, does anyone have proficiency with vehicles? No. Okay. That would have helped, but we'll rely on the Guidance. Proficiency with sailing. Meanwhile, Bramble, the coat that Garandad puts on you is even more uncomfortable. This heat is not abated and just simply begins to suffocate you even worse. He'll stick a foot out, a bare foot out the back. <laughs> All right. Um, with your guidance, uh, Felthrin, if you would make a... Let's do an intelligence check. We're going to go with um, history. Oh, that's good news. History, I'll let Arcana also take place. You can do history or Arcana. Yep. I'll do both of them at the same time. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's going to be a 23. <laughs> Boom. You feel that like engine just pop and the engines start rumbling. It has this horrible vibrating effect. You're all just beginning to shake. You immediately grab on and as soon as filter and presses the pedal down you just move at lightning speed across this desert plain leaving behind a dust in your wake ha, 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 ha. now this is what i'm talking about last yes. time i let a young dwarf drive it didn't go very well got to leave it to the old guys that's right you're clearing across this area and it's incredibly exhilarating hey it's a little bit rough go for it <laughs> Whoa! Uh, there's not much I can do. I'm just, I'm. Hopefully, I've tied it around something that's not going to get pulled out of joint. <laughs> yeah, right at the last minute, uh, Bramble, uh, you instinctively, you feel the rope just begin to pull and undo, and you instinctively grab it and hang on as tight as you can. And now Bramble's like being pulled, <laughs> nearly limb from limb, hanging on to the back of the Hi, motorcycle. Hide me to the bike. <laughs> slow down, slow down, Melvin. Garandan, respond to the situation, please, before Bramble and Hay go tearing off into the sunset. Yeah, Garandan's gonna yell and Felton's it, and then uh, grab Bramble too to support him and just, we need to stop! We need to think about this. <laughs> uh, Felthrin. Where's our imp friend? Uh, he is, you notice that he, uh, he kind of trails with you for a minute and then vamps back into existence, disappears, and then boom, he's right beside you, sitting in front of you near the rear view mirror, just kind of cross-legged. He's writing down a couple notes and he's pushing his glasses up as if he's not moving at all. All right. Are we going the right direction? Oh, chap, it feels right there. You're ever so close. Just keep your pedal to the metal and your friends flying behind you. You guys hang on, we're almost there.